Guy brains are very simple. All we want is food, kitty, and high fives. But where can you find a pet store without a height requirement? Amsterdam! That's right, buying kitty is legal in Amsterdam. No more coming soon, their stores are open for business. Hell, they're literally advertising in the window. But before we get to my greatest purchase of all time, let me tell you about my trip to the Netherlands. First, I flew to the UK, then took a four-night cruise to Ijumu... Iju... Iju... Now, originally, I was supposed to go straight to Amsterdam, but my ship got rerouted after environmental protesters chained themselves to the port. Which, to be honest, I kind of respect. Imagine doing something that inconveniences 4,000 people at once. <laughs> That's a true hater right there. So instead of docking in Amsterdam, we docked in Ijumu, and surprise, surprise, we're greeted by protesters. They had the classic big sign, feminine bicycles, crippled, unshaven woman with a megaphone, everything you could want from self-righteous betas. Now, they were there to protest cruise ships, saying they were terrible for the environment, in which they're totally right. Those stacks aren't for breezing the ocean, they're chloroforming Earth. So I agree with their message, but disagree with their approach. Like what seems like a better strat, kidnapping the CEO of Exxon, or shaming tourists. Deb just wants to play shuffleboard and get truffed up in Amsterdam, okay? She's had a tough life. Let her have this. But luckily, the protesters weren't able to block us from entering Ajuville. Actually, all they really did was make it so we now had to take a 45-minute bus ride to Amsterdam. Which is kinda an extra F you to them when you think about it. Oh, were you trying to prevent harmful CO2 emissions? Well, congrats on creating more! Anyway, I hopped on the bus and was so excited. Because I'd never been to the Netherlands before, and a 45-minute journey across the countryside gave me a chance to do what every American loves most. Judge other countries. I already knew we're better, but now I get to see why. First major downgrade is most people rode bicycles. And not because they were convicted of drinking and driving like in the U.S. No, they chose to ride bikes. Bikes! The only thing gayer than a fanny pack. The only time it's socially acceptable to ride a bike is if you're under 12 and escaping Diddy's house. Can't stop. Won't stop. Second major downgrade is I didn't see one homeless person. Now, compared to America, that might seem like an upgrade, but believe me, it's not. Sure, they don't have to step over human suffering to enter a Starbucks, but having clean streets feels too... sanitized, you know? Like going to Disneyland without all the darkies. Yeah, I get it's safer, but pff, talk about boring. I mean, what's a city without a crackhead baptizing a pigeon? The demon. The demon's taking hold! Face it, the homeless add character to a community, and I'd rather laugh at despair than be fair. The smell of herb and lack of brawls can only mean one thing. I've officially arrived in Amsterdam. Here, ganja, truffles, and kitty are all legal to buy. That's right, you could pay to get so high that you forget you're her eighth customer this evening. First come, best served is her motto. Seriously, could you imagine showing up early only to be the second customer in line? Enjoy my sloppy seconds. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let me tell you how trashy the city was. Starting out with the canals, which look great on postcards, but up close are more like junkyards. Filled with rusted bikes, broken beer bottles, and I'm assuming all the homeless. The worst part was the smell. Oh, like a mixture of expired bong water and wet dog. Now, growing up in New York, I'm used to the Hep C factory that is the Hudson River, but at least we have guardrails. In Amsterdam, there's nothing. No barriers, no rope, no bed to respawn, just your homie yelling, you said you wanted to get wet. Speaking of accidents waiting to happen, they're buildings. Every one of them is either tilted, off-center, or leaning like it's gonna tell you a secret. That secret being run. Yeah, turns out building a city on marshland wasn't the best idea. But Amsterdam isn't known for its good decisions. No, it's known for its debauchery. The kind to excess that would make Vegas blush, blunts that warp reality, truffles that turn you trans, plastic dopamine one credit card swipe away. Ooh, baby, we're getting to the juice now. Because I had officially arrived in the hottest part of Amsterdam, the red light district. The most popular part being this tight hole right here. Mm, that hole was packed. The streets clearly weren't designed for thousands of tourists. And you heard that correctly. You walk on streets, not sidewalks. Every once in a while, you get grazed by a moped. Ugh, tits. Ugh. Tits. That's right, fun bags in a street window, waving, come on in, big fella. I almost cried, seeing all those angels do the Lord's work. Here, let me take the demon out of you. Now, prior to arriving, I had two misconceptions. One is I thought it'd be Nip City, but every girl had clothes on, which makes sense because men are monsters. Hard to entice customers when Billy keeps standing outside the window playing pocket pool. Also, when you think about it, covered is better. It adds to the anticipation. Does she have stretch marks, a C-section scar, areolas that look like IHA pancakes? I need to know! I need to know! I need to know! My second misconception was, I thought they'd all be uggos. Bro, every girl was 10, 10, 10. Even the alleyways were filled with dime pieces. Well, all except one I dubbed Busted Central. If you like botched lip filler, fur line crocs, and chicks shaped like KFC buckets, then Busted Central is your playground. But you want to know the craziest part? Those girls actually seem more desirable. All the other ones were just too fake, like walking through a cyberpunk game with a bunch of pork bots. All plastic, no soul. At least on Busted Central, what you saw is what you got. Yeah, it was a plane crash, but I'm from New York, so I'm into that sort of Thing. Now, before I talk about spreading her twin towers, let me tell you more about Ground Zero. The girls work behind windows, surrounded by 
red lights, which to men might as well be a green light. Some dance, but most just nervously shake while taking hits from their vape. <sighs> Get it together, Stacy. Their office is essentially a walk-in closet with just enough space for a bed, bathroom, and her to kneel. Most were located on the ground floor, but every once in a while you see one in the second. Like, damn, bitch, oh, you're really making me work for it. Strangest part is they all had apartments above them. Like, could you imagine living there? All you're hearing is squeaky furniture and crying. Yeah, it's nice to have eye candy outside your window, but not when she's always mouthing, help me. But the real spectacle wasn't the workers, no. It was the animals looking in. The guy staring like he just gained an extra chromosome. The couple wondering if this will save their relationship. The bachelor party cheering for their bro. Woo, get it. Oh. The group of guys nervously laughing, waiting for one to go first so the others don't look so pathetic. You had guys leaving happy, sad, muttering, it's not small, it's fucking average, if anything. And finally, you had me, standing at the edge of a life-altering decision, wondering if I should turn back to safety or plunge into the unknown. And it was at that moment I realized the only thing scarier than the leap is the regret of never jumping at all. Plus, did you think I was going to leave without doing research? <laughs> Boys! What did you think I came here for? So the first thing that happens is with the door open, you negotiate a deal. Money, time, how many spanks you get, everything you can think of. Then you pay by either cash or card, which made me wonder, could this be a business expense? You're telling me therapy is a write-off, but not below ease? <laughs> which do you think is gonna make me feel better? Then after payment, she closes the curtain and you go to the bathroom to wash up. Bathroom had what you'd expect, toothbrush to wash your mouth, soap to clean your balls, mirror to see your shame. Then after washing up, she provides you a jimmy and says, I need to see you put this on, which I was totally cool with, but I had a hard time getting, uh, you know, hard. However, being a professional, she starts dancing to get me in the mood, which to most guys would be sexy, but I found hilarious. Watching someone dance with no music is objectively silly. Now with the pressure building, I'm trying to stay focused, but my hamster brain keeps getting distracted. I'm like, is it a smoke detector or a camera? When's the last time she washed her sheets? Is that a panic button all the way on the other side of the room? I'm not a monster, but there is no way she would reach that. Then she starts rubbing my shoulders and my battery begins to fill. Soon after, we did the dirty, and all I have to say about that is, uh, not my best performance. Fellas, you know how it is. Sometimes you face a boss you're not expecting, and they beat you down. I didn't know you'd be this powerful. So I know what you're all thinking, and probably the reason you clicked on this video, how much did it cost? Well, again, there are a lot of variables. The service, duration, your ethnicity can all impact the cost. But just to give you a baseline, this lovely lady charged me 600 euros, or about 650 bucks. Was it worth it? Yes, of course it was, because great stories are forever, and chlamydia is only temporary. Red Light District is pretty easy to spot, as there are red lights everywhere! Every entrance, every exit, and if you're lucky, every entrance again. Why finger cross a Gucci bag will get me into the back door when I can just open it myself? Do you think they have a no crackhead policy? Most work across from each other. Be like, damn, Stacy's about to have a rough go. My knees were weak, arms heavy, fighting off my throbbing spaghetti! Imagine if I just took a dump and left. I got what I paid for. What's it like to be with someone who isn't into you? Well, I already have a dog who doesn't like to be pet, so I'm already used to touching someone who keeps resisting. The Netherlands is just too uh, vanilla, you know? They don't have homeless people, school shootings, or religious fundamentalists running their government. Basically what I'm saying is you go to the Netherlands if you want to have sex, but you go to America if you want to get fucked. Mm, you know what you want to do? Oh, you want to push that subscribe button. Oh, push the button. Push the button.